Hello, it's now time for chapter five of our Lewis and Clark book. Um, I moved positions, but we'll see if this works. I may have to move again because it's hard to get the lighting correct, but we'll try it out. Okay, this chapter is titled Up the Wide Missouri. May 14th, 1804 was a banner day for the explorers. It was the day that they were to leave the Wood River camp and begin their journey. With the men pulling hard on the oars, the big keelboat and two pirogues moved out into the white and muddy Missouri. A small group of well-wishers along the riverbank cheered. Clark's journal for that day reads, I set out at four o'clock p.m. in the presence of many of the neighboring inhabitants and proceeded along under a gentle breeze up the Missouri to the upper point of the first island camped on the island, which is opposite the mouth of a small creek called Coldwater, a heavy white rain this afternoon. At this stage, the expedition included 14 soldiers, Kentucky volunteers, and several rivermen. The rivermen were skilled in handling the boats. York, Clark's slave, was another member of the expedition. Clark called York my servant. George Druyard was probably the most valuable member of the party. He was highly skilled as a hunter and trapper. He was a crack shot. That means he could shoot things from far away. Driard could speak two Native American languages. He was also an expert in sign language. Lewis and Clark had trouble spelling Driard's name. They wrote it down the name, excuse me. <laughs> they wrote it down the way it sounded to them. In their journals, Driard, oh, is always Druyer or Drewer. So it's pronounced Drewyer, D-R-E-W-Y-E-R is the phonetic spelling, but the actual spelling is D-R-O-U-I-L-L-A-R-D. Hmm. Good to know. Private Pierre Cruzat was also highly valued. He could speak the language of the Omaha. He also knew sign language. Playing the fiddle was another of Cruzat's skills. In the evening, to turn the page with one finger. I can't do it. <laughs> I have to put this down. In the evening, when the explorers camped, Cruzat sometimes entertained the men with his fiddle playing. The expedition also included Lewis's dog, Seaman. Seaman was a powerful Newfoundland with a black coat. The dog was the expedition's only pet. Seaman was more than Lewis's companion. He served the expedition as a hunter. Seamen caught squirrels and geese. A strong swimmer, seamen would sometimes be sent out into the water to force beavers out of their homes. The men found roasted beaver tongue to be delicious to eat. Mmm, beaver tongue. <laughs> Doesn't that sound gross? Yeah. Throughout the journey, the captains kept strict discipline. Lewis and Clark realized that there would be times when their lives depended on each man doing what he had been instructed to do. So anyone who broke the rules was quickly punished. In order to be a cooperative group, you have to obey the rules, don't you? The Missouri was a never-ending challenge. The rushing current made for hard pulling, but that was only part of it. There were dangers at every turn. In shallow spots, the men waited beside the boat. Some used ropes to pull the boat. Others pushed from the rear. Ridges of sand in the river called sandbars were another hazard. In a journal entry for May 24th, 1804, Clark wrote, the swiftness of the current broke our tow rope and was nearly oversetting the boat. All hands jumped out on the upper side and bore on that side until the sand washed from under the boat. Great clumps of driftwood and barely sunken logs also caused problems for the boats. Sometimes it would take hours for the men to fight through the debris. As they labored with the boats, mosquitoes, gnats, and ticks assaulted the men. They suffered from stomach aches and a variety of infections. On June 17th, Clark wrote, The party is much afflicted with boils and several have dysentery, which I contribute to the water. The explorers' poor diet also contributed to their poor health, because really... Seldom did they ever have fresh fruits or vegetables. And we know now that in order to be healthy, you need fresh fruits and vegetables. Your body needs those vitamins. 
Surprisingly, only one member of the expedition died during the long journey. That was Sergeant Charles Floyd. Lewis described Floyd as having bilious colic. What Floyd probably had was appendicitis, and the captains were helpless in attempting to treat appendicitis. Despite the problems, the explorers made steady progress. Although there were some days that they would travel only five or six miles, they also had good days. These usually came when the wind was at their backs and they could hoist their sails. On such days, it was possible to cover as many as 20 miles in one day. And once or twice, they journeyed even farther. Can you imagine having to try to cover 20 miles every day? That's a lot. Each evening after the party had established a campsite, the men would cook and eat together. Sometimes the men would be given cornmeal and lard. Other times it was pork and flour. Fortunately, the banks of the river were rich in game. Game means animals that they could hunt. Drewer and the other hunters would bring back deer, turkey, and geese. They also tracked down bear and elk. Some of the meat was jerked. So have you guys ever heard of beef jerky? That's what that means. So when you jerk a meat, it would be cut and pounded into thin slices and they were dried in the sun. Jerked meat could be carried in one's pocket and eaten as a snack food. On rare occasions, the expedition passed traders and trappers headed downstream to St. Louis. Their canoes would be piled high with furs and buffalo grease. They also carried tallow. That was an animal fat used in making candles and soap. On June 12th, the party came upon Pierre Dorion, a French-Canadian trapper. Dorion had lived among the Yankton Sioux and spoke their language as well as French and English. The captains hired Dorion as an interpreter. He agreed to stay with the party as they traveled through Sioux country. On the evening of July 4th, the expedition pulled in for the night at the site of what had been a Native American town. They could not help but be impressed by the beauty of the land. We camped in the plain, Clark said, one of the most beautiful plains I ever had seen, open and beautifully diversified with hills and valleys, all presenting them to the river, covered with grass and a few scattering trees with a handsome creek meandering through. At sunset, the captains ordered the expedition's cannon to be fired. It was, without a doubt, the first 4th of July celebration west of the Mississippi. And that is the end of chapter five. Okay, I hope you're enjoying this beautiful sunny day. See you later. Bye.